U.S. Farm Report, a public information program brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation by members of the National Farmers Organization in this area and others interested in having American agriculture receive cost of production plus a reasonable profit. The American farmers and ranchers are building a brighter future for agriculture through the National Farmers Organization, the organization that awoke America and represents the leadership of agriculture. U.S. Farm Report presents Progress of NFO with special guest Oran Lee Staley, president of the National Farmers Organization. Here now is President Staley. The NFO has been making progress, is gaining, and is winning. The battle that we have been waging in the last several weeks to get farmers a fair price for their products at the marketplace is one that needs to be understood and its importance even better recognized by farmers themselves. We have been involved in a holding action in recent weeks, and during this holding action, we have changed our strategy several times. Only the members of the NFO that attend our county meetings in each county really understand how this strategy has been used and why it has been changed. Of course, farmers have to realize first that collective bargaining does mean farmers bargaining together and selling together. We started our last holding action for the purpose of gaining two objectives. The first objective was to get contracts with processors that would give us stability in our prices and to be able to tie down the necessary gains through collective bargaining. The other goal and aim of the holding action was to block our production together for nationwide block bargaining in all commodities. This doesn't mean just livestock or just grain or just dairy but it goes to the real heart of what it takes in collective bargaining, and that is farmers bargaining together and selling together. Now, what progress have we made? Of course, the first key to progress is to continue to strengthen the organization. And this comes about only through a better realization on the part of farmers that they cannot meet their problems in this modern day economy by themselves. And then it takes more than just a realization. It takes them actively joining the NFO and becoming a part of the total effort. On this point, we have spread our organization now into 41 states. This has been a tremendous growth for the NFO in the last few months. The biggest growth that the organization has ever experienced since the inception of its collective bargaining program. This is due, I think, largely to two factors. The first factor is the acceptance of collective bargaining. The realization on almost everyone's part that collective bargaining is necessary and that NFO does have the answer that can give farmers equity and fairness at the marketplace. The second factor is one that really points to the fact that NFO is fighting the economic battle that farmers must have fought. In other words, we can all talk about the problem, and everyone knows that there's a tremendous problem that does exist, because the price of everything we have to buy continues to go up. But the prices on the products that we receive, or uh, that we sell, have continued to remain at low levels over a period of years. And this has caught farmers in the cost price squeeze. And it's gotten so bad that almost all the farmers realize that they cannot meet their problems as individuals. The youth has left agriculture to a great degree. The average age of farmers, 57 years of age, or thereabouts, meaning that there has to be a change. There has to be a meeting of the problems. 
because with that average age of farmers and the youth not staying in agriculture, it does mean that our industry, the agricultural industry, has serious problems. Therefore, we call the holding action to give farmers the opportunity to join the NFO, to become a member, and also to use their production to make collective bargaining work. It is so foolish for farmers to go to the marketplace and say, what will you give me? And then go across the street and pay the price that's on the price tag for every commodity they have to buy. And so we offered farmers the opportunity and are continuing to offer farmers the opportunity to wage this economic battle together. To be able to say that we have the strength that we're using to say to the buyers, these are our products and we're going to put our price tag on them. And so as a result of the holding action, we have made considerable progress in the signing of contracts with processors. Processors are just like anyone else. They're going to buy just as cheap as they can buy as long as they can do that. And also, as long as they can get the production that's necessary for their plants, then they're going to buy at that cheap figure or as cheap a figure as they can possibly buy the production. So we use a holding action at intervals to show to processors that more production has been brought together, that this is production that they cannot get. But in this holding action, we have used considerably different strategy than we've used in the past actions. And this strategy has changed because of the increased strength of the organization and our ability through the experience we've had to be able to better understand how we can use our production by holding it on the farm and then the additional step of instead of dropping that production that's been held on the farm in one large amount to you be able to feed it on the market in such a manner as it keeps the processors hungry for production. And this we have used by naming it distressed sales. This meant only moving that production that had to be moved at a certain time. The distressed production, of course, was moved to processors that had signed contracts or had indicated their willingness to sign contracts. This means that you have another tremendous advantage in collective bargaining by using your production in this manner because then you're able to begin to approach a position where you can turn the production on and off just like you would turn the water off at the faucet in your home. And so this means that we're moving together, using our production together, bargaining and selling together. Now some definite results that are not generally known have to go back and be pinpointed to the fact that as the large commercial feedlots on cattle moved their production into the plants, this meant that they were using that production, and I say they, either the commercial feedlots or the processors, to really kill our efforts in many cases. Many of the commercial feedlots, however, do represent membership in the NFO. But nevertheless, that production that moved out of those lots then immediately coupled with the fact that processors were killing seven and eight hundred pound steers. This meant that it shortened the supply tremendously in the future and now. And therefore, it was offsetting the supply that was building. And so you counteracted those two and it brought about a very quick upturn in the price of seven and eight hundred pound feeders and stockers. It also brought the price up on the cows and such because the shift and the emphasis to trying to get whatever they could into plants to process. And then of course as this has developed and then when we started moving our cattle through distressed sales we moved them committed ahead at a price that was advantageous to our members. Therefore, we were able to build the price, stair-step it somewhat. And all this together has built additional progress 
in the NFO collective bargaining program. Now let us take a look at what's happened as far as hogs is concerned. As the holding action progressed, it was evident from the facts that we were gathering and the facts that we had before the action started, there's going to be a considerable heavier supply of hogs during the months February, March. Therefore, it meant whether the price was going to drop drastically even down to maybe 14 cents, or whether we were able to keep this production blocked together the same time using it to get contracts, but to maintain a price level that would be much better than it would have been. And so when some of the farm publications came out with the fact that there were a million head of hogs that had not come to market, as we started moving distressed hogs to market, and by distressed hogs, those that had gotten up to market weight or to very heavy weights. We started moving the heavier weights just as the market would absorb them, and thereby maintaining a price level much higher than it would have been. Now, how did we do this? We did it through our communication structure, through our marketing area chief structure, which is now a permanent structure that is based on a super county bargaining structure made up of approximately 40 members in each county that keep up to date the amount of production that our members have that's getting ready for market. And then moving that production together and keeping the processing plants in a position of being hungry for supply. This is establishment of collective bargaining and the gains that are being made while we're in a holding action as we put together a permanent structure that all pinpoints and bases back that collective bargaining means farmers bargaining together and selling together so that when a processor needs 3,000 hogs in this plant in an area, 2,000 in another plant, or 5,000 scattered all over the country that we're able to make a commitment for a certain number of hogs on a certain day. And through this bargaining process, we're now able to move in a much different manner than we've ever been able to do before. Before, there would be a holding action. We would hold as long as possible, make what gains we could make, and then call the action off. This time, however, because of the great strength of the organization and the communications, we are able to adjust our strategy to meet the various problems and a further collective bargaining. Of course, it's very evident, or should be evident, to almost every farmer. In fact, every farmer, I think, on this point, that the only reason that farmers are receiving the present low prices is because enough of them are willing to sell at those low prices. That we can put our price tag on our products just the same as a man puts the price tag on this coat. Any day that the farmers themselves make up their minds they're going to sell only when they sell together after bargaining has been carried out. By the use of this strategy, and by the use of this strength, we're able to continue to improve bargaining position as far as our efforts are concerned. But the improvement of that bargaining position continues to be dependent on up a better, on upon a better understanding that collective bargaining does mean farmers bargaining together. And as we announced at the beginning of the holding action, that was one of our objectives was to block together our production for nationwide block bargaining. This we're doing in grain through our in-position grain sales program and our grain bank. 
and as far as dairy is concerned through our dairy authorizations. As far as dairy is concerned, I think the record is very apparent. Very easy to understand if farmers are only t will only take a look at it. We initiated a dairy holding action a little over a year ago. Without that dairy holding action, very few people would have ever recognized that there was even a problem. In fact, I think hardly anyone. Only the individual farmers themselves. But individual farmers, by themselves, recognizing that there's a problem, does not do anything about correcting that problem. Therefore, as a result of the milk action, you've seen many things happen. You've seen an increase in price. You've seen merge, uh, groups merge into stronger groups. You've seen price supports raised to 90% of parity, the only commodity that this has happened on, although several other Others, commodities, could have this happen. The law is there. But it happened in dairy because of this concerted and coordinated effort. And so as we look over the record, without NFO making the battle, no one would even recognize there's a problem as far as low farm prices is concerned. And without NFO fighting, who would be fighting your battle? No one. So for this reason, it means that farmers should support our efforts. And the only way they can support our efforts is to become members of the NFO. But even more than that, the most important thing after they become members is for them to realize that collective bargaining means farmers bargaining together and selling together. And so as we continue the battle, and we didn't start in this battle to just start and then stop, but rather to keep building the strength and keep building the battle to achieve the goals that we must achieve. And so every time that a farmer is upset because his prices are lower than they should be, and because of the increased cost of the products he has to buy, are continuing to rise, although his products stay at the same level, then he should say to himself, these are problems I cannot do anything about as an individual, because he can't. And he should immediately, upon recognition of this fact, say, I'm going to join the NFO and become a part of this effort. Now, farmers have an alternative, as they always have had. There's no way that we can make you join the NFO. We're not trying to make you join the NFO. Collective bargaining cannot be imposed upon anyone. Farmers have to have the desire, the will, and the determination to meet their own problems. Nobody else is going to do it for them. They never have. And so it's hard for farmers many times even though they've been able to make the changes in production as far as methods and increased efficiency is concerned, at the same time, not realizing that changes have to be made in marketing so that there cannot be just marketing, but that there has to be a bargaining procedure. That bargaining procedure has to be carried out through a structure that makes it possible for them to have coordinated efforts to work together, and their production is what counts. And so that's the whole heart of the NFO collective bargaining program. It means bargaining together and sewing together. Now, farmers have the alternative of doing nothing about it. This is what they've done through the years. They've gone about saying, we are rugged individuals. We don't need anybody's help. But everyone else got organized business, labor, the school, te uh, school teachers, the garbage workers, the truckers, everyone else. And everyone else has made gains. And so as more and more farmers join the NFO, we're making more and more gains. And it comes down to the real point of decision. Collective bargaining means farmers bargaining together and selling together. And this is what the NFO is doing. 
this is what we're not only giving farmers the opportunity to do, but what we're carrying out also, the alternatives that farmers have to look at are really only two. Drifting on as they have been, which means corporation agriculture taking over. A few years ago, when we started talking about corporation farming and the NFO, people thought we were just trying to scare someone. But it was so inevitable, so natural a course to follow, that it had to come about unless farmers realized that they could not meet their problems by themselves as individuals. Why? The average age, 57 years of farmers. It means as the farmers brought their farms together into larger units, that unless sufficient prices were there to give a fair return on their investment, that the youth was not going to stay in agriculture. And as the youth left, and with a larger and larger investment, the only way that the owner of that land, land or ownership of that land could be transferred would be to a capital corporate structure, because that would be the only way that enough capital could be brought in to take over the capital structures that had been brought together. But the thing about it that we realize and is now happening is that as these corporate structures moved in, they were not interested just in a small tract of land. They were talking about a mechanized type of agriculture. And the only way that they could establish this, the only way it is being established, is to get the land together in large tracts. And the only way they can get that done is for the prices to be low enough that enough farmers either become discouraged and are willing to sell or are forced out or the fact that the youth is not there to take over the land and operate it. In almost every community, if you'll take a close look, you'll find that there are only about eight to 10 farmers under 40 years of age in any township. If I were a businessman in a small town in rural America, I would be just as deeply concerned as if I were a farmer. Because this means his potential customers are not even going to be out there in a very short time. And every place that a corporation farm that has moved in, that I know of, with investment capital, has not used the local bank or the local feed dealer or the local machinery dealer. They have their own credit. They have put up their own feed meal, a feed mills, and they buy their machinery from another corporation at the wholesale level price. And so this means that it's not only a corporate structure that's being built, but it goes even farther than that many times. It's an integrated setup, an integrated setup that's part of another company, maybe a processing company. Getting enough production there that will be available to dominate the pricing structure. And so the battle that we're talking about is a battle to de determine what type of agriculture we're going to have. And that's the reason the NFO is waging this battle with all the strength that it can muster. And I'm going to be very blunt and very frank. Many times, farmers do not understand what this battle is really all about. And many times, they do not understand what's really happening. And so instead of blocking their production together, or instead of holding it, they listen to a commission man or a buyer who tells them today is the time to sell. They keep working on them to convince them that instead of blocking their production together, they should continue to sell as individuals. And sometimes 
even farmers take up the challenge or make it a challenge to keep the NFO from working by fighting their own neighbor's efforts when they should realize that the effort their neighbors are making, the NFO members, is not just for the NFO members, but it's for all of agriculture. And that this strength that we're building together and molding into collective bargaining does give farmers the only hope, the only way they can meet their problems. And any time that the farmers decide, at this point in history, that they're not going to sell their products until they get their price, they'll get it. And so we've been able to get enough farmers that would do that to become members of NFO and hold together and bargain and sell together that we've been able to make this continuous progress. Progress from the time when there was no acceptance of the idea of collective bargaining until today almost everyone says it's a necessity. But being a necessity is not enough. It has to work. That means cooperation among farmers, helping each other, bargaining together and selling together. So the issues are very clear. Do you want to go ahead as an individual farmer and say, I'm big enough to compete with a processor that has 30 plants in 20 states? that I can do it? Or do you want to be proud of the fact that you can say together the farmers can put a price tag on their products? There's no question in anyone's mind but what the job can be done. And it is being done. But how fast it continues to be done is dependent upon the farmers. And that dependence is upon how fast they, each and every one of them, decide that they are tired of going to the marketplace and saying, what will you give me? And then paying everyone else's price tag. They have to make up their minds. They are going to be businessmen and women and put their price tag on their product. I can assure you that we in the NFO now in 41 states, with a great communication structure, the ability to bargain successfully with the largest companies in this nation, are going to keep the fight going. We're going to change strategy because that's part of collective bargaining. You can't do the same thing tomorrow that you did today. You're bringing about change, and in bringing about change, you have to be changing. And so we'll learn through our efforts and by the increased strength, we're going to put our price tag on our products. Therefore, we call on all farmers that are not now members of NFO to become members immediately so we can bargain together and sell together and get enough more contracts to add to the contracts we already have to put our price tag on our products. Today's program has featured Progress of NFO with Oren Lee Staley, President of the National Farmers Organization, as special guest. Members of the National Farmers Organization invite you to tune in again next week at this same time for more facts on agriculture and rural America, which is a gear wheel in our economy that produces the majority of our nation's new wealth. The farm income pattern sets the nation's prosperity and the National Farmers Organization represents new thinking in a new generation of agricultural producers.